Hello. So now we're going to talk about the fate of the Earth. So we have a situation in which the Earth is over here. Center of the Earth is over here. And there's an asteroid that is moving directly towards it. OK, the asteroid's down here. So the mass of this asteroid is 4 times 10 to the 10 kilograms. So about the size of a mountain or something. It is moving at a steady speed of 20 kilometers per second. So this is easy to convert into uh, meters per second. So it will be 20 times 10 to the 3 meters per second. And you know, we might even want to get rid of that extra zero over here, 2 times 10 to the 4. meters per second. So the asteroid is 4 times 10 to the 6 kilometers away. So times 10 to the 9th um, meters. And the radius of the Earth over here is 6,400 kilometers. So it's 6.4 times 10 to the 3 kilometers. So that's 6.4 times 10 to the 6 meters. You know, good to have all your units, um, all your distances in the same unit units. All right. Um, so humans are not going to go without a fight. So they sent a, a rocket. And what I'm going to describe will be pretty much impossible to do, but still. Uh, they're going to attach a rocket that is going to produce a thrust completely um, perpendicular to the direction of the asteroid. So the thrust that this rocket is capable of producing is uh, 5 times 10 to the 9 newtons. All right. So that is about, let's call this, let's call it D. This is about all the information that we have about the problem. So um, you can ignore the Earth's gravitational force on the asteroid, also the rotation around the sun. This is the whole situation. And there are uh, three questions. So if the mission fails, so I mean, nothing happens over here. How many hours is it until the asteroid impacts the Earth? Second question is, when the radius of the Earth is 6,400 kilometers, by what minimum angle must the asteroid be deflected to just miss the Earth? And the third question is, what is the actual angle of deflection if the rocket produces this thrust for 300 seconds before running out of fuel. Well, to get the first one, the time that it will take if we don't do anything, we know the velocity. Velocity is, is going to be this distance divided by the time, and we want to know the time. So time is just distance divided by velocity. So four times 10 to the nine meters. 
and two times 10 to the fourth meters per second, meters and meters go away. We have seconds up there. And so that is four times 10 to nine divided by two times 10 to the fourth. That is one, two, three, four, five. Two times 10 to the five seconds. And you know, if you want to see to get the time in more understandable units, like from a human perspective. can do 3,600 seconds in one hour. So we get rid of the seconds. And it's about 55.55 hours. If you want it in days, 2.3 days. So uh, it's called do nothing time, 2.3 days. Okay, the second question is, uh, we know the radius of the earth by what minimum angle must the asteroid be deflected to just miss the Earth? And so what we want to know in that case is what is this angle over here? So We have the um, adjacent side of this triangle. This is going to be a, a straight angle. So adjacent and opposite. So tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. So that means that the angle is going to be the arc tangent of op opposite over uh, adjacent. Um, opposite is six point four times ten to the six meters. And adjacent is four times 10 to the nine meters. So we take our calculator. This is 0 0.0016. So arc tangent of that is 0 0.0916. So we can say 92, rounding up degrees. So it's a pretty, It's a pretty tiny um, angle, actually, but you know this distance is it's pretty large. So I'm gonna put it over here. Mm, let's call it theta minimum. Zero point zero 
92 degrees. All right. For the last part, what is the actual angle of deflection if the rocket fires at full thrust for, I should say over here, delta T, 300 seconds before uh, running out of fuel. Well, the 300 seconds is Uh, pretty small compared to the 2.3 days, right? But let's see. So the distance I'm calling this um, x. It's going to be x naught minus initial velocity times the time, uh, sorry, plus, plus one half of acceleration in x times t squared. We can move this x naught on the other side. And so this is just the displacement, and we're gonna take it that to be zero, so, Let's call it delta x, the displacement. It's going to be the initial velocity times time, and plus that. The initial velocity in x is zero, right? It's moving directly towards the Earth. So we can't forget about that one, too. And so the displacement is just going to be um, one half. Actually, there's a better way to do it. So we can use this one first. So the initial velocity again is, is zero, but we can get the, the final velocity. So the acceleration If you draw the free body diagram, you only have the thrust. So it's going to be thrust equals mass times acceleration in x. So this is the mass of the um, asteroid. So if we divide the thrust by the mass of the asteroid, we get the acceleration in X. So that is gonna be five times 10 to the nine divided by four times 10 to the 10. So the acceleration is 0. 125 um, meters per second squared. But this is only um, in the x direction. So we're going to put it over here. All right, and so we're going to get a, a velocity, this one is zero. So it's just this 0 0.125 meters per second squared 
times 300 seconds. So, that is going to give the, the asteroid a velocity in the x direction of 37.5 meters uh, per second. And so, the y direction is not changing. I mean, the y distance. So this is still going to be the 2.3 uh, days. And we had the time in seconds. It was two times 10 to the five seconds. So the velocity in X, this is the displacement in X, and this is the time. So we move the time over here, we can get displacement in the X direction. So that displacement is going to be 2 times 10 to the 5 seconds times this velocity, 37.5 meters per second. We cancel out our seconds, we end with meters. And so that displacement is going to be 7.5 times 10 to the 6 meters. And so the answer, I mean the answer, the, uh, the question asks for the actual angle of deflection. But we already know because these um, displacement 7.5 is greater than the radius of the Earth. We already know that it is not going to hit the Earth, and so it is going to be greater than this 0 0.092. So the angle is going to be the arc tangent of the displacement 7.5 times 10 to the six meters divided by the distance four times 10 to the nine meters. So now this one is 0 0.00175. Before it was point zero zero one six, so we take the arc tangent of that, and we get that theta zero point one um, zero seven uh, degrees. So. Is it greater than the minimum angle? Yes, it is. So will, will this thrust save the Earth from the asteroid? Uh, yes, it would. And so you know, that makes sense because why will you send a rocket that is not going to be able to do it? This is easy to calculate as you saw. What is actually very difficult to do is to send a rocket that it can intercept the asteroid in a, in a um, at a 90 degree angle or even close to 90 degrees 
you know, you can, if you send it in this direction, then by the time it reaches this position, the velocity is going to be too large. It's, it is, this asteroid doesn't have enough gravity to um, make the, the rocket start to rotate around it. So it'll be difficult. What you will have to do is to send it in this direction and make it rotate the Earth a little bit and then send it in a spiral that will uh, get to the asteroid. And you know that has been done with asteroids that are not moving that fast. But to do it with an asteroid that is moving at this speed, yeah, it would be, it would be pretty tough because even in that case, you know, you're going to have your velocity in this direction. This one, the asteroid still has the direction in the velocity in this direction. So um, it's actually very difficult uh, to protect the the Earth from an asteroid if the asteroid is going to hit the Earth. Even if you send a an atomic bomb, um, it will just make a bunch. It will make it. Uh, it will make them the the pieces smaller and a bunch of pieces, but you know they will still travel in pretty much with the same velocity and very likely still hit the Earth. Um, as you see, the angles are are pretty small, so most of them will still hit the Earth. So not a good situation to be in. All right, thank you.